Very happy to see you all this morning in the house of God. I think it bit, it's been a bit cold, so a lot of you overslept and came slowly by 8.30. So is it at 8 o'clock, I want to remind, so you can get up and make it and not miss any part of it, so that you can be touched by and transformed by Him. He's the one who makes us to fishers of men and for us to be transformed by him we need to be in his presence and yield ourselves and be available the bible we saw said that they first took all and followed him intensive three and a half years of constant continuous almost 24 hour training with the lord ensure that they would be used by god to lead and change this world so the more time you spend with God each and every day and not miss any service of the church because God is the one who planned the church. It is not started by man. Jesus said, I will build my church. And he is the one who's building it. And when we stand along with him and follow him, he will tell us, go here, do this, go there, do that. He needs people. He's the orchestrator. He's the conductor. He's the commander in chief. He is the organizer, he's the one who plans things ahead and he's looking for people who will listen to him, who will follow him, who will obey him and he'll be able to say, go there and say that and you'll be able to go and say that and then wonderful things will take place. Signs and wonders happen so that the people of the world will know that God is real, that God is alive. And after that, some people will have to fight for certain things in their life but when they first have to make a connection with God God shows them a sign that he is real that he is true and so they follow him and then sometimes their love gets tested and they might be wondering where is the miracle that took place that time where is God but through the difficult situation as you hold on to the Lord through those few days and certain seasons God will definitely Give you double for the trouble that you're going through. Have no doubt about it. If you're facing any difficulty, any problem in your life, any sickness, any disease and sudden attack of the enemy, I want to tell you that God will definitely come up at the right time and He will deliver you. He will set you free. He will lift you up. Prove your love and your commitment to the Lord through the difficult times. And then when the season is over, when the hour of testing is over and you are proven to be as pure as gold, then you will be able to get in higher and be used by God in a much more mightier way. We've been seeing about how God was the one who told the children of Israel, his chosen people, to keep certain feasts. And this morning, we want to look at a particular feast, the feast of the Passover, because we as a church believe in taking part in the Lord and keeping His word. And as we do it, we want each and every one of you to know and refresh your memory and your mind needs to be renewed in Christ Jesus and your body and your spirit will be strengthened by it and will come in alignment with it. And we are able to see from the word of God the wonderful things that it does as we take and take part in the table of the Lord, as we take part in the Lord Jesus Christ. So that we are not doing it as just a ritual that is nice. But let us know all the things that take place as we take part in the Lord. The wonderful things that will take place in your body, in your mind and every part of your life. Because God is the one who instituted this and planned for this. Even in the Old Testament, he told them to do that. You can see in Leviticus chapter 23 about the feast of the Lord that we've been seeing. And in detail, the feast of the Passover has been given to us in Exodus chapter 12. Very shortly, very quickly, we want to see and go through this. We just have a few minutes and then at the end of it, we will be able to take part in the table of the Lord so that everyone here understands what we are doing 
so that no one is just doing it because the others are doing it as a church we've got to know what we are doing and how important this is so even if you come the last few days and you have joined us and this might be something that is not done in all the churches in this city or nation and certain parts of the world where they take part in the table of the Lord they have holy communion only on the first Sunday of the month and that's about it but we have it every Sunday and we have it every time we gather in the name of the Lord even on a Friday morning and times of meeting every morning early morning services praise week services we do that from Sunday to Sunday each and every day because they are instituted by God and they have a wonderful effect in your life so know that and receive that and expect that as you take part in the table of the Lord let us go to Exodus chapter 12 verse 1 onwards very quickly I want you to join along and follow with all your attention so that we can complete this as soon as we can Exodus chapter 12 verse 1 are you ready you got your Bibles Exodus chapter 12 verse 1 get yourself prepared like as if you're going to start a sprint shake your legs loosen your joints get your minds fixed warm up and then be ready to dash in verse 1 it says Exodus chapter 12 now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying this month shall be your beginning of months it shall be the first month of the year to you when did this happen when he was going to give them the Passover when he was going to deliver them so life begins with a contact with a shadow which represents Jesus Christ who will come later so you can see that your life begins as you connect with Jesus Christ and for them he said right as they were going to get delivered the first feast that they kept was a feast of the Passover that's how it all started the point of start in their life the day they took the first step out of Egypt out of darkness out of bondage out of affliction was the day in which they took part in the Lord Jesus Christ and I want to tell you your life will begin when you connect with Jesus when you got saved and also when you commit your lives to him and when you take part in the table of the Lord and every time you take part that which the devil tried to do to you to stop you in your tracks if you're paralyzed not physically but in your life you feel that everything is standing still and things are not moving press on and come to the house of God at every service we meet and take part in the table of the Lord and I will tell you that God will deliver you so do not think that it is to be taken lightly and say oh what can I do oh these things happen and forget that there is a point of connection that you can have with Jesus Christ at every service that is why I want to have it nearly two years I prayed about it as God led me and he's the one who's instituted and told me and I'm very clear I'm not doing it with any doubt but I want you each and every one of you to know what you're doing in your life so that you can receive from this otherwise it'll be a monotonous meaningless ritual that you have made of no effect as you approach the table of the Lord without faith and without expectation then it says in verse 3 onwards where God says speak to all the children of Israel saying on the 10th of this month every man shall take for himself a lamb he was very clear according to the house of his father a lamb for a household there are other instances where you can see even in Leviticus chapter 12 where a child is born and God gives options of a turtle dove when, when someone is not able to bring a lamb unto the Lord but this instance it is only a lamb nothing else because Jesus would be the lamb of God and this was showing what would come hundreds of years later thousands of years later and that is why it is clearly given they might have not understood but they were practicing what would eventually take place on this earth 
and they were telling that Jesus is coming and this lamb represented God that is why this very otherwise strange introduction would have been given to any man when John the baptizer looked at Jesus and said in John chapter 1 verse 29 behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world so that's how Jesus came and this showed that he is going to be the lamb the third thing we can see here is in verse 5 it says your lamb shall be without blemish a male of the first year you shall take it from the sheep or from the goats it shall be without blemish Jesus Christ is a perfect sacrifice and the very first year not an old lamb which is lived for a long time and is maybe feeble or about to die but a young lamb because Jesus came with full power and authority he came and gave us his best Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10 it says but that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all verse 12 it says one sacrifice for sins forever verse 14 it says by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sacrificed those who are being sanctified so Jesus is a perfect sacrifice that is why this lamb was to be without blemish they cannot give unto God something which had a weakness something which had a defect because it will almost show like Jesus had a problem he had a defect God didn't do that he gave the best he gave his only begotten son the best that any man could ever get so they had to give unto the Lord representing Jesus Christ without anything being wrong with it even when you offer unto the Lord give the best do not give unto him that which you do not need that is almost being disrespectful like as if you're giving it to somebody who is a beggar that's not how we treat the Lord we give our God the best at any time fourth thing we can see here in Exodus chapter 12 verse 6 is now you shall keep it until the 14th day they were told to take the lamb on the 10th day of the first month the first 10 days were preparation so that Moses could tell and they could get ready and they would get things organized but it all started when they took it on the 10th day and let it stay with them even if they had had a hundred lambs in their flock outside somewhere else outside the town outside the village now they had to bring one of it not many of it just one of it and keep it with them in their house right at the door or even inside the house till the 14th day so that they would know that this lamb is there they start feeding it the children start getting connected to it and they take care of it and their lives are revolved around this lamb and they form a slight attachment and at that time on the 14th day they have to kill it at twilight we live in a time when the church is squeamish the church is forgotten that Jesus died for them that he shed the blood for them that is why they might not use the name of Jesus or the blood of Jesus they just want a comfortable convenient Christianity which has got the mask of sophistication of the world but does not have the truth in it don't ever be ashamed of what Jesus did for you for in the crucifixion in the death and in the burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ is your hope is your eternity is the solution to all your problems do not ever feel like that is something which you need to hide that is something you need to boast about and here they had to kill it why because God the father had his son the Bible says that Jesus was in the bosom of God the father but he gave him for us he gave him for you and he gave him for me because of his love for us we've got to know that love that God had we got to come and approach the table of the Lord knowing that what great love father had for me that he gave his son he left his son if you have just one child would you give up your child to die for someone who hates you who does not know you who does not understand you what is the best thing that you like in your life tell me some of you might flap and show your phones why don't you come and put it here and the altar and don't take it back already some of you have palpitation of heart hearing that or do you have the best jewelry or do you have what do you like your car your house all the money how much is in your bank 
how many crores do you have clear it all out and come and give it to somebody you might say what do you want me to do all this but jesus was like that he was better than all the money they can ever make even if all of it joined together all the people of the world joined together and give the whole world and write it say here god is the earth that you created that is still nothing it's not even a tiny dot or a speck in the universe that god has you got to realize how god loved us so much see how he loved you when you come and take part in the table of the lord you got to know that is the love of god you can never ever say after that oh who loves me or oh god doesn't love me that proves that god has loved and you've taken part in it you can't take part in the table of the lord and go back and speak or think or allow the devil to trick you and make you feel that god doesn't love you there in is the evidence and the proof that god loves you every time you take part in the table of the lord if you do not believe in it do not take part in it but i want to tell you all to take part let your mind and your body be in alignment with the word of god god doesn't share his love and his word and his presence and has not kept us here on earth and kept his church here so that he can walk away but so that you can come and align yourself according to his will and plan and his word and connect with him 1 john chapter 4 it says in this the love of god was nine was manifested toward us in this was the love of god manifested toward us that god had sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him in this is love not that we love god but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins beloved if god so loved us we ought to love one another so love all the people in your life do not hold a grudge give up forgive forget move on or you shake someone and say move on brother forgive everybody move on sister if you had a fight last night then definitely have to shake that person and say move on exodus chapter 12 was seven it says and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two door posts and on the lentil on the houses where they eat it you would apply the blood they had to take it and apply it on the door posts and on the lentil that's the entry point into their life into their homes into their families into their marriages everything that they had and they had to stay inside there and that was protected that was marked with the blood of jesus hebrews chapter 9 verse 20 says this is the blood of the covenant which god has commanded you verse 22 it says in hebrews chapter 9 according to the law almost all things are purified with blood and without shedding of blood there is no remission of sin none of us can be cleansed of our sin without the blood of jesus having been spilt and everything is purified with the blood of jesus all the things in your house all the things even in the house of god each and every one of you therefore you need to be sprinkled with the blood of jesus use his blood you see the previous verse 21 it says then likewise he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry in hebrews chapter 9 so apply the blood of jesus and take part in his blood so that you would be marked to be those who belong to the lord jesus was 8 exodus chapter 12 let us go there where it says then they shall eat the flesh on that night roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it you got to take part in the lord do not ever miss out on taking part in the lord jesus christ that will give you the strength that will give you what you need to live your life in a victorious fashion and manner that's why he told them many times most of the other feasts and most of the other sacrifices they could not even see they could not even have anything to do with it it all belonged to the priests and the levites but here is almost the only instance when they have the lamb right inside the house and they take part in it and eat on it so do not miss out on this this is a point of connection with the lord don't ever let anything come in between you and the lord come and take part in him hebrews chapter 10 verse 25 let us read it together 
where it says not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a manner of as is the manner of some but exhorting one another so if you see someone is not there behind you in front of you besides you those who normally sit around with you if they're missing this morning look around yes come on look around see who's not there if anyone is not there then exhort them go back home and don't go to your home go to their home right after church maybe buy a few packets of food or biryani or pizza or whatever you like what do you think they like and sit down in their house and ask them how they are doing and exhort them saying do not forsake the assembling of yourself with the church and with the body of Christ why is as so much more as you see the day approaching but if we sin willfully we have received the knowledge of truth there is there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries anyone who has rejected Moses law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses how much more worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the son of God underfoot counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace you've got to know this these are the words of God so that you do not enter into this judgment you've got to be aware of this all this is connected with assembling because there were those who assembled once and then they forgot and let something else come in their way it is almost like dishonoring God God is saying Hebrews chapter 10 verse 29 who has trampled the son of God underfoot counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing ah. oh this Sunday is not there next Sunday is there this service I don't honor next service I can honor a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace for we know him who said vengeance is mine I will repay says the Lord and again the Lord will judge his people he will judge his people so let us be aware of that and connect with God and have a relationship with him so that you do not enter into this judgment I'm not saying this so that you can feel condemned there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus but now let us approach the throne of grace where there is mercy let us call unto God speak to him connect with him do not let him get angry with you for anything let us go back to Exodus chapter 12 verse 9 where it says do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with water but roasted in fire its head with its tail and its entrails every part of it right from the top of the lamb to the end of it because Jesus came and he gave all for you every part of his body every part of his being his mind his emotion his physical body all was bruised and he gave himself as a complete total sacrifice for each and every one of you why so that you can receive his power his healing his deliverance for every part of your life there is no part of your life where God cannot be involved in and where God cannot bless you where you feel that oh I wish God could do something for this part of my life I want to tell you there is no such spot that God is not concerned about or does not have love for or does not have the provision for he has given it all so that you can receive it all for every part of your life amen every part of your life that's why they were instructed saying but roasted in fire its head and its tail and its entrail and then verse 10 it says Exodus chapter 12 you shall let nothing of it remain until morning but whatever remains until morning you shall burn with fire you cannot disrespect it disregard it and throw it away you've got to treat it with respect knowing that it is Christ you've got to give reverence and honor to what you take part in the Lord that is why you've got to come with dedication with commitment knowing what you're taking part in and what you're doing with it is like what you're doing with the Lord Jesus Christ and what a sacrifice he gave let us honor it second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 it says as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness he's given you all things that concerns your life and 
for a spiritual walk with the Lord he's given all things Romans chapter 8 verse 32 it says he who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things he will freely give you all things as you come and connect with Jesus Christ amen hallelujah let us go back to Exodus chapter 12 verse 11 where it says and thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist and sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand and you shall eat it in haste it is the Lord's Passover they could not have a relaxed meal because this showed them that they were prepared and they were ready they were dressed up and though they were at home it couldn't be like oh they're just in the pajamas and wearing their shorts and the t-shirt and just relax manner take part in this because then they wouldn't be ready to move ahead I want to tell you as a take part in the table of the Lord you've got to come prepared to launch out to step up to run ahead you're getting a, on a journey are you ready to take a wonderful journey with the Lord Jesus Christ then you come and take part in the table of the Lord this is what it showed them that they were ready because God is going to deliver them God is going to set them free and they are prepared as they get ready to take part they are prepared with everything that as soon as they take part in it then the judgment of God would come upon the land and then they would be delivered you got to eat it in haste because they don't want to waste time and stay there in bondage you got to do it in haste you got to come with such conviction such desire such longing to come and take part in the table of the Lord come running prepare yourself get ready so that you can get everything of it you got to be here even before the service starts pray and get ready this is not an entertainment event or a program you can just come and watch this is a house of God where you got to come and pray for the others come earlier service at 8 you plan to be here by 7 30 and pray for the people of this nation come and pray for yourself say oh Lord do something awesome in my life pray for the others if you got everything you need in your life wonderful I'm very happy for you pray for others who would come with great need who might be going through a difficult situation come and spend time in reading his word and praying we have fellowship after the service not before the service maybe if you see someone who's come after one year you can go catch them and sit with them so they don't run away before the end of the service but otherwise spend your time in prayer and in reading the word of God in intercession if you're doing something for organizing and setting up finish it as quick as you can and be in a prayerful mode that's why I don't want to talk with anyone before the service got to prepare and come here as quiet as we can for in the multitude of words sin is not lacking the Bible says a fool is known by the noise he makes so let us not end up allowing our mouth to speak certain things where God is displeased but let us come here and let us be in a prayerful mode and let us wait on the Lord come early shake someone and say come early they'll say why you were not there I was there say again come early <laughs> 8 o'clock is the service brother <laughs> where were you at 8 o'clock ask them shake them and ask where were you at 8 o'clock I was waiting for you so get ready for a wonderful journey as you take part in the table of the Lord do not think that you're going to just be there God is doing amazing things let us continue Exodus chapter 12 verse 12 it says for I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night and will strike the, all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment I am the Lord as you take part in the table of the Lord the devil gets defeated again he was defeated 2000 years ago at the cross and every time you take part in the table of the Lord God will bring judgment on the land but you will be protected because you got the blood of Jesus and you've taken part in the Lamb of God when there is a shaking of the world God wants to shake it but before he could shake it he wants the lamb of his flocks the people of his kingdom the disciples of his church oh the soldiers of his army to 
come and connect with him the cells of his body each and every one of you are the members of Christ Jesus when you connect with him you receive from him what you need for that week for that day and then God will be able to shake the world because he wants to bring judgment and he will bring judgment on this nation and all the false gods with a small G there is only one God with a capital G and he is shaking this world so the truth will be revealed he is not doing so that the people can be affected he is doing so that the systems of the devil which are deceiving the people making them think that evil spirits are God will be shaken up and they will know I thought this was the God I've been following it but it looks like it has no power and before God could shake the land before he could strike the earth and the city and this nation he wants his people to connect with him and receive from him as soon as you take part immediately judgment will come in upon the land and you will be ready you need the vaccination everything is going on fine still you need because there are things that are going to take place in the coming days in the coming weeks and you've got to be prepared you've got to be vaccinated in advance so that when it gets hit you will be safe those who did not take part in those who did not apply the blood those who did not stay inside the homes where the blood of the lamb was applied they would have not made it they would have died it's as simple as that are you in the kingdom of God are you in the house of God when you're supposed to be protected by the blood of Jesus Christ there is no two ways about it and Jesus finished it all at the cross he brought judgment and justice for all the afflictions of mankind let us continue Exodus chapter 12 verse 13 it says now the blood shall be assigned for you on the houses where you are and when I see the blood I will pass over you and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you you are protected by the blood of Jesus let the blood keep you safe and when the Lord sees the blood he knows that you clearly shown that you belong to Jesus that you made a clear distinct mark that everyone could see this was a physical blood that was applied and anybody in Egypt could see it they might have not understood it they might have not known what is going to take place but God asked them and required of them to do it and they did it because they knew that his word was a word that they could depend on they did not doubt anything about what he said and the plague did not destroy them you will get safety from the plague that will hit the rest of the world when you are protected by the blood of Jesus even now you're sprinkled first Peter chapter 1 verse 2 he is writing to those who are there in the dispensation the pilgrims of God the elect chosen ones of God he says in verse 2 sprinkling of the blood that's what they've come unto you've come this morning not to a physical location but you come to the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus each and every one of you as they did thousands of years ago dipped oh and sprinkled it on the doorposts and on the lentils as you come to the house of God the blood of Jesus Christ is sprinkled on you and you're marked and you're protected Hebrews chapter 12 verse 18 it says for you have not come to a mountain that may be touched and burned with fire like in the Old Testament and the Israelites when they stepped into the wilderness saw God descending upon that mountain there was earthquake and trembling and shaking but verse 22 it says Hebrews chapter 12 why don't you turn there and see where you've come each and every one of you this morning it says you have come to Mount Zion to the city of the living God the heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn are registered in heaven to God the judge of all to the spirits of just men made perfect to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling even now the blood of Jesus Christ is sprinkled upon you for it speaks better things amen only one seems to believe that all the others have got your tongue in a knot thank you for the next person the others even now we are just somewhere or amen no one had said amen then we could have said okay it's all right but when one says amen the other says nothing then what are you saying why are you silent do you not believe or accept it let us go to Leviticus chapter 23 where it says in 
was to speak to the children of Israel and say to them the feast of the Lord you shall proclaim to be a holy convocation these are my feasts we saw how God said they are my appointments the word for feast is not just just coming and eating and just celebrating and having a good time and going away thinking oh we just went to a carnival because nowadays many places they have on festival and harvest festival and then all kinds of street festival and this church and that church and go there and eat something buy something walk around they might even have some amusement equipment set up and go on the merry-go-round and the giant wheel and enjoy and get excited and eat some popcorn and some candy and go back home that is not the feast that God is talking about this feast is when you meet with the Lord it is a feast it is an appointment you're meeting with God and what is the first feast that they had what is the first appointment they had same Leviticus chapter 23 verse 4 it says these are the feasts of the Lord holy convocation he shall proclaim it at the appointed times on the 14th day of the first mother the twilight is the Lord's Passover at their appointed times what is the appointed feast that is kept for us as the church of Jesus Christ can anyone tell which is the day Sunday morning 8 o'clock Friday morning 6 o'clock if there are services every morning those are the appointed times yes or no is there any confusion in that wondering what is happening when is this Passover in the year it is happening every week let us go to the book of Exodus chapter 12 verse 14 it says so this day will be to your memorial and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations you shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance it is a memorial you've got to understand what Jesus has done every time you come here you're declaring that I'm remembering what you did for me O Lord Jesus that's what I read every time we take part in the table of the Lord in 1st Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 onwards you can turn there and see because most of the time you've got your hands with what represents the blood of Jesus and the body of Jesus neither of your hands so this morning go there and read what it says in 1st Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 these are the verses that we read every time we take part in the table of the Lord where it says for a receive from the Lord you've got to receive it to give it because it's Jesus who gives he says here he gave the apostles and then they were able to give if they did not receive they cannot give and so Paul the apostle who was met out of time and out of place now says very clearly I received from the Lord and says in verse 24 take it this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me we are remembering what Jesus has done and we honor it and we revere it and it is someone who's died for us it's like a memorial service you come and you think about that person you should have just a separate service for that you'll have people coming in and speaking about all the things that person did and we'll put a PowerPoint presentation and a video of the person who's died we'll say this person this is we'll write from the small age all the photos all the video clips and people from all the walks of his life people from his workplace all the relatives will come and say oh he did this that day for me he spoke like this oh she did this she did that and everyone remembers all that they almost get so touched by it they might even be moved to tears and sometimes with great joy for the great things that they did and you got to come here and remember at every service we come and take part on the table of the Lord all that Jesus has done never forget it do not just be in a blank mind in a blank state blank attitude just as somewhere and that's why you got to sleep well the previous night and not keep all kinds of appointments on Saturday night come home at 3 o'clock and then come here and blink and nothing will work out we will miss out on the service we will not be able to focus we will not be able to receive yes it is a sacrifice do you want to come to heaven then you got to be willing to sacrifice or you can go like the rest of the world live for 70 years or whatever and have your way and then don't let us say anything for the rest of the eternity you got to make the choice it is in your hands it is your life you've got to decide for it do not let the days go to waste do not let any service go to waste and he says in verse 25 1st Corinthians chapter 11 this do as often that is why we do it as often as we can 
as you drink it in remembrance of me again he says in verse 26 for as often as you eat this bread first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 26 as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes you're proclaiming it though you might not be opening your mouth as you come and take part in it it shows that you have not forgotten his death and his death was a reality he died for you someone loved you so much that he took your place and died for you imagine you are supposed to be hung till you die with a hangman's noose but someone stepped at the right time and said i'll die instead of you how will you respect that person how will you remember that person how you'll honor that person whatever they said you will do or not You'll take care of everything that concerns that person. If they had a family, you will support that family. You will take care of them. And here is the family of God. He's given it into all our hands. You are the brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. You've got to love one another. Just as God the Father loved us. And he gave his son for us. So this is what the Passover, this is what taking part in the table of the Lord does when they did this they did this in the old covenant when moses commanded it but this one meal transformed their lives in such a way there are five things that we can see the bible says it took place there are many other things there isn't time just want to see as quickly as we can what the israelites receive so that you will know how much more you'll receive in the time of the new covenant when right in the old covenant when just a lamb it was not jesus it was in faith an action that would take place much ahead in the future they took at that time and ate of the lamb and they received this what is the first one that they received even in the old covenant is the health for their whole life deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 4 it says oh your garments did not wear out on you nor did your foot swell these 40 years these 40 years they walked in the wilderness with no proper furniture no proper dwelling place in the heat of the day kept walking went around and round and round from battles to different kinds of locations and topography and all kinds of elements that hit them but through it all their feet did not swell these 40 years you will not have a reaction in your physical body how much more in the new covenant you need to expect total and complete healing in your life you cannot accept any sickness you cannot accept any disease and let it remain in your body because you're taking part in the table of the lord oh for by his stripes you are healed two thousand years ago for he is the lord who heals you isaiah 51 6 says lift up your eyes to the heaven and look on the earth beneath for the heavens will vanish away like smoke and the earth will grow like a garment and those who dwell in it will die in like manner but my salvation will be forever and my righteousness will not be abolished his saving grace will be there forever in your life they just took this one meal and then they dashed out of Egypt and they were able to continue their foot did not swell no one had walking problems no one said my leg is paining oh can you slow down you're just walking and walking my feet are swelling young to the old to everybody if any one of you seen sissy d mills charleston helston's 10 commandments few years ago you would have seen some old people being carried by other young children that is not the truth they all were able to get up and walk even till that time there were some who were 80 years old and they were sitting in a wheelchair as soon as they take part took part in the passover lamb they'd have got up on their feet and they were all able, able to walk it's a supernatural healing that i'm speaking about with you this morning and it took part this is a testimony this is moses writing your foot did not swell these 40 years he was not stopped by anyone there he's telling them your feet did not swell at the end of being there with them for 40 years no one there could oppose it and say oh no no they all kept quiet because that was the truth what is the second thing that happens when they took part in the passover in the old covenant imagine how much more power you will receive in the new covenant with the blood of jesus christ and the body being given already on your behalf deuteronomy 29 
5 it says for I have led you 40 years in the wilderness and your clothes have not worn out on you and your sandals have not worn out on you God had the sustaining power not just over their body but over everything that they had in their life 40 years the clothes did not wear out how many of you got any clothes that you're wearing for 40 years I don't know how many of you even old 40 years is anybody here who's got a t-shirt or a shirt wearing it for four years today this morning all of you want a new dress every Sunday morning very good no problem let God bless you but nothing should wear out on you how about your feet what are the shoes how long have you been wearing it anybody wearing it for four years no I'm seriously asking can I see your hands does anyone who says that shoes are for four years that's been running around yes 40 years it can continue in the old covenant how much more in the new covenant let your words and your thinking and your mind be in alignment with the word of God don't cancel the blessing of God and the provision and the sustaining power of God with your words saying oh I think this will wear out soon then it will wear out soon and say oh I think I have some problem in this side I don't know what is happening or this side something is happening then do not cancel the blessings of God confess in faith God's sustaining power would be seen in your life the third thing is they lack nothing Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 21 he's telling about how 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness and they lack nothing God gave them everything that they needed how did it all start as they kept their appointment with the Lord Jesus Christ by taking part in him on the feast of the Passover on the Holy Communion how much more will you be in this day and time of new covenant you need not lack anything God will give you all that you need 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness they lacked nothing whatever they needed their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell again they say that's a truly a remarkable miracle normally in the wilderness you walk you'll be sweating like anything and that gives out all salts and that will tear with the heat in the day and within just maybe a few months it might wear out and you might get holes how many wearing a sock for four years without any hole in them you don't have sweated at that time yes you're sweating and sweating there then the footwear would have got soggy and dry and soggy and dry and it gone in bits and pieces God took care of everything it was a remarkable miracle that took place at that time Psalms 34 10 the psalm that we saw says but those who seek the Lord shall lack shall not lack any good thing even the young lions lack and suffer hunger but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing Jesus himself says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 34 one onwards therefore do not worry saying what shall we eat oh what shall we drink or what shall we wear where will we be able to get all this Jesus says in Matthew 6 32 for after all these things the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things but seek first the kingdom of God and his, his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you seek God seek his presence seek to take part in the table of the Lord and everything that you need in your life will be added to you the fourth thing that you can see that took place is Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 34 tells about how you also multiplied their children as the stars of heaven and brought them into the land which you had told their fathers to go in and possess we live in a day and time and age where oh they're giving out all kinds of fearful news and information saying oh the environment is very different now there's so much of pollution that procreation is so difficult in these days oh you cannot expect as before to have children but they walked and walked and walked they did not have even the things that we have now but still God multiplied them and increased them how much more God will multiply your children time to have another child I think take a bunch of slaves and lead them through the wilderness I do not know if after 40 years will there anyone be remaining but 
after 40 years they came up with a whole new generation strong and healthy and fine and well that they could go and fight for all their lifetime that's the strength that God gave them and it all started with that Passover meal such physical strength such ability God gave them to be able to reach the promised land as he had planned and fight all the way through to it could have been really exhausting could have been really draining but God made it possible for them the fifth thing you can see is supernatural strength Psalm 105 verse 37 it says he also brought them out with silver and gold I'm not focusing on that as if they took part in the Passover lamb they got silver and gold there are other things let us stop you'll definitely get that also but what I'm focusing on is there was none feeble among his tribes none feeble no one was weak so do not accept weakness oh let the strength of Jesus Christ flow through you why don't we stand up at this time this morning and prepare ourselves knowing that all these things took place in the old covenant health for their whole life they were a generation who were rebellious they did not listen and believe in God and his word and his promises still he sustained them if they had obeyed him they would have been the ones who would have gone into the promised land and it would have kept them alive for many many years to come even after that Caleb and Joshua were 80 85 years plus old and they still had the strength of God they had health for the whole life because they were the only two ones who believed in the words of God they're the only two ones who trusted in him and they are the only two who went into the promised land and God made it possible for them specific he sees what you do what you believe in what you speak about Caleb tells Joshua in Joshua chapter 14 verse 8 about what happened it says in verse 7 I was 40 years old when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart verse 8 he says nevertheless my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt he did not make the heart of the others melt but I wholly follow the Lord my God that's what makes the difference he wholly followed the Lord is God and God ensured that he entered the promised land that one meal helped him and he says Moses told me surely the land which your feet has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever because you have wholly followed the Lord my God he spoke directly to Caleb and gave him this word and so now he's coming and reminding Joshua about that and verse 10 he's saying now behold the Lord has kept me alive the Lord God will keep you alive and he said as he said these 45 years ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness and now here I am this day 85 years old he was not worn out and he says yet as yet I am as strong this day as I was on the day that Moses sent me he has not lost his strength I am as strong this day as I was on the day that Moses sent me just as my strength was then so is my strength now for war he is ready to go to war the nations of the world will disperse you and discharge you and say you cannot fight if you're more than 40 years old they say you do not have the physical strength to be a soldier and go through such physical strenuous exercises but he is at 85 saying just as my strength was then so is my strength now for war you can have strength for walking around and moving around but he's got even more strength that he's able to fight the enemy with himself tackle the enemy who is there he says both for going out and for coming in how much more each and every one of you need to have strength this morning and he's saying in verse 12 now give me this mountain he's not asking for a plane where you can just walk carefully and say oh is it smooth and fine as the stones there he's saying give me a mountain an 85 year old man saying give me that mountain I'll climb up and fight the enemies who are there and clear that and take it and grab it don't say oh this is coming that is coming and attacking me oh where is my strength 
you will have your strength as you take part in the table of the Lord. And he said, give me this mountain. And he said, and I'm able to drive them out as the Lord has said. And they were Anakim there. They are giants. They were the giants of those days. And he's asking for giants who live in the mountain. A normal disadvantageous position. No one would want to go with war with a giant. Not just one giant. Giants were dwelling there on top of the mountain. All they have to do is roll a stone and you can get crushed by it. Such courage, such boldness, such strength. You've got to have even more in this day of the new covenant after Jesus has died and shed his blood and given off his body for you. Amen. Why don't you all close our eyes this morning. There is so much more but you can go home and read your Bible and you'll be able to find it. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, even as we take part this morning, let your power flow through each and every one here. For we believe that supernatural things will take place. Oh, your sustaining power, oh Lord, let it be seen in each and every one of them. Oh, your ability, oh Lord, to make us endure. Oh, the strength that you give, the life that you give, let it all flow through each and every one here. Oh, breathe on us, oh Lord, even as we get ready to take part in you. Oh, breathe upon me, breath of God. Come breathe upon me, sweet spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands in surrender to your name. Most high, I'm yielding to your spirit. I'm walking in your love. Jesus, I adore. Oh, Jesus, I I'll sing. Breathe upon me, breath of God. Breathe upon me, sweet spirit of the Lord. As I lift my hands in surrender to your name. Oh, come on, lift up your hands. Your name most high. I'm walking in your love. Oh, Jesus, I adore. Oh, tell him all about Jesus. Jesus, I
Fishers of men who believe in your words, Lord Jesus. The unlimited, unlimited, unlimited power and potential this appointment with you has, O oh Lord. Unlimited, unlimited. There are no limits to the things that can take place in your life as you take part in the table of the Lord. Oh, why don't you shout out in faith if you believe in it? Say unlimited. I will receive unlimited. Oh, power for everything pertaining to life and godliness. As I keep my appointment with Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, confess and say, as I keep my appointment with Jesus Christ. All those of you who are going to take part in the table of the Lord, open your mouths and say, as I keep my appointment with Jesus Christ. I will receive unlimited of all that God is. For Jesus says in John chapter 6, verse 35 onwards, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger. He who believes in me shall never thirst. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. Most assuredly, I say to you, Unless eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Who oh, eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. 